YouTube. Today, May 1, 2022. News headlines. Ethiopia update Third ICRC convoy vital humanitarian assistance reaches Tigray. The international community is kidding TPLF sending less than 1% aid. Africa, Ethiopia, population on the brink, the humanitarian action of the church, which asks for peace. Tigray teen recount 16 month refugee odyssey. Mail online, the 1st of May 2022. Building on steps to end the conflict in Ethiopia, United States government hears how you know, April 29, 2022. Africa, Ethiopia, population on the brink, the humanitarian action of the church, which asks for peace, Addis Ababa, Agenzia Fidis, at the end of 2021, when we understood that the conflict would continue, we agreed that more attention would be needed and to start an aid program. At that point, the church, the bishops, the clergy took action to seek different sources and bring aid not only in Tigray. We launched an appeal and a fundraiser was launched which involved Caritas Internationalis, and other organizations such as CAFOD, the Italian Caritas itself and others, and we reached the figure of around 2 million euros. Shifra Ormamo, program manager of Caritas Ethiopia spoke to Fidis. He explains in detail the decision taken by the Ethiopian Catholic Church, last December, at the end of a year marked by a catastrophic war, to organize a fundraiser to reach the exhausted populations of Tigray but also of other regions such as Amhara, Afar and Aromia. The project aims to provide humanitarian assistance and rehabilitation to people affected by food insecurity and conflict, taking advantage of the truce launched by the government and collected by the TPLF Popular Front for the Liberation of Tigray, notes the head of programs, we made a proposal after having also collected data from the UN and the government and submitted it to Caritas Internationalis. The situation is desperate, with millions of people displaced in various regions and populations on the brink. The war, in fact, unfortunately crossed the borders of Tigray, overflowing into various other areas of the country and forcing more and more individuals to flee or to food insecurity. It destroyed schools, hospitals, infrastructure. For this reason, driven by the dramatic humanitarian emergency, we have decided to launch an appeal. The budget that will eventually be raised will exceed 2 million euros and will reach around 200,000 individuals. At the moment we already have 600,000 euros available and we plan to leave these days with direct aid. In the meantime, after very difficult months, there are minimal signs of relaxation in Tigray and in the surrounding areas, which allow the rescue organizations to bring aid in a more constant and regulated way. Shifra or Marmo adds, we have made some progress in the last two weeks, flights organized by the UN to Macau, for example, are now two per day, while before they were two per week. This is essential for transporting medicines, money and basic necessities. But that's not enough because ground transportation is much easier for food. In the last two weeks, only 21 trucks have left, too little for an exhausted population of millions of people. There are trucks waiting to leave and we would like to fill them with food but we do not know when it will be possible to obtain the permit. Something is moving and coordinated by the United Nations, negotiations are moving forward to reach a definitive peace.
I am sure that a process is being carried out behind the scenes as well and I want to hope that with all the actors involved, such as the African Union, the former president of Nigeria Obasanjo, and the Secretary General of the United Nations Guterres himself, as well as the Church, we will soon reach a positive result, for the good of the population. L.A. Agenzia Fides, the 29th of April 2022. Building on steps to end the conflict in Ethiopia, United States government hears how you know, April 29, 2022, millions of people in Ethiopia continue to face acute food insecurity and extreme hunger as a direct result of conflict. It stated we are encouraged that the government of Ethiopia and regional authorities in Tigray and Afar have taken steps in recent weeks to enable the delivery of desperately needed food aid to war-affected communities. We urge the parties to accelerate, uphold, and expand these efforts to ensure, as President Biden has said, immediate, sustained, and unimpeded humanitarian access to all Ethiopians affected by this conflict. The United States stands ready to continue to assist in this life-saving endeavor. The statement added, in recent months, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has taken a series of encouraging actions that have laid the groundwork for an end to conflict, including lifting the state of emergency, releasing some political prisoners and detainees, and, in parallel with Tigrayan authorities, declaring an effective cessation of hostilities. We are similarly encouraged that Tigrayan forces have withdrawn most of their forces from afar and have reiterated their commitment to a peaceful resolution of the conflict. We now urge the parties, as my team and I have in recent days, to seize the opportunity to advance a negotiated ceasefire, including the necessary security arrangements, and call for the restoration of essential services in Tigray on an urgent basis. The United States remains committed to a unified, prosperous, and sovereign Ethiopia and to supporting an inclusive political process to heal the country's divisions and provide peace and security for all Ethiopians. T. Tube is extremely angry by the joke of U.S. on the people of Tigray. Until now U.S. is concerning on the sovereignty and unity of Ethiopia while it has effectively destroyed it. The use did not say anything on the occupied and invaded Tigray zones. The vulnerable people of Tigray who are dying as a result of the genociders are forgotten. The U.S. is wishing Nula wishes to destroy Ethiopia and Africa by singing the songs of fools which is unity the mission of the new world worder of the Illuminati. The fake unity is aimed to destroy democracy, and put power under the hands of dictators who can keep the interest of America and the West not the interest of their people. During the, the time of the butcher Abiy Ahmed Ali I Illuminati has opened offices in Ethiopia, religious institutions have bombed, religious conflict and bloodshed become day-to-day -day news. Tigray teen recounts 16-month refugee odyssey. Mail Online, 1 May 2022, the teenage refugee from the war-torn region of Tigray in Ethiopia had just had a narrow escape from drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, like countless others before him. Even so, as he stood on the crammed deck of a rescue boat, 16-year-old Abba Hajiria was already thinking of how to help his family once he gets to Europe. For Hajiria made the journey alone. I want to help my family. To work in Europe to send them money, he told AFP on board the Medsan Sans Frontiers MSF ambulance boat, Geo Barents. 
I have a double responsibility, to give them back what they gave me, and to get them out of a region where there is still conflict, he added. The 17-month war between government forces and the Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF, has created a humanitarian crisis in northern Ethiopia and sparked fears of famine in Tigray, which has been under a de facto blockade for many months, according to the UN. Hajiria was pulled out of an overloaded dinghy with another 101 people off the Libyan coast on April 23. Struggling to stand amidst the other migrants lying on deck, he watched an improvised hairdressing session with some consternation. That's not the way to do it. He's not cutting anything here, he pointed out, with the experience of someone who has handled clippers many times on his journey into exile. Hajiria is just one of the 748 unaccompanied miners rescued by the MSF boat since its mission began in May 2021. Children who make the journey alone are among the most vulnerable of the thousands of exiles trying to reach Europe, said Julie Melika, MSF humanitarian affairs officer on board the Geo Barents. Lacking the protection of an adult, they must be able to access their rights and the child protection that is part of that, in a safe place in Europe, she said. All countries are obliged to apply the International Convention on the Rights of the Child, adopted in 1989, she added. Several of Hajiria's seven brothers, are fighting in the TPLF. Tattoos on his skeletal forearms pay tribute to them, to his parents and his sister. I love, reads one. Hajiria said he barely had time to escape when the fighting broke out, completely isolated, the war came on suddenly. I fled for my life. But once I left, I couldn't come back, he told AFP. Tigray is completely isolated by the central government. There is no electricity, no water, no access to food. With two friends and a phone, he crossed the border from Ethiopia into neighboring Sudan and, after a 16-month odyssey, eventually reached Libya. He did not talk much about his experiences on the road. But when the discussion turned to Libya, he gestured to signal bound wrists and beatings. Libya is a really dangerous country, he said. He paid $9,000 to smugglers to cross the Mediterranean, he said, a sum his relatives collected for him. I haven't talked to my family in a long time, he said. The central Mediterranean is the deadliest sea route in the world. More than 1,553 people disappeared in 2021 en route to Europe, according to the International Organization for Migration IOM. As the Geo Barents was headed towards the port of Augusta in Sicily, Hagiria kept himself busy helping with English translation and applying bandages to injured fellow migrants. Ethiopia Update, 3rd ICRC Convoy of Vital Humanitarian Assistance Reaches Tigray Addis Ababa ICRC, an international committee of the Red Cross ICRC, convoy of 20 trucks containing vital humanitarian assistance including food, seeds, water treatment materials and medical supplies reached Mekele on Saturday 30 April 2022, with the support and cooperation of the parties to the conflict. Article 30 April 2022 Ethiopia This is the third convoy by the ICRC to reach Tigray within the last month, supplementing the humanitarian assistance, primarily medical items, flown in by 54 ICRC cargo flights since January. Patients were dying. These medical supplies have saved so many lives. 
the help has been tremendous, and we hope it will continue, said Dr. Kibram Gebrezelassi, medical director at Ida Hospital in Mekele. The medical supplies brought in by the ICRC will cover the treatment of 65,000 patients in 13 primary health care facilities for three months, as well as 6,600 diabetic patients for up to one year in four hospitals, in addition to a significant boost to operational health facilities in Shire, Semema and Shiraro hospitals. We went from home to home to inform patients of the arrival of medication and the resumption of their treatment. Some of them were in a critical condition and, thanks to these supplies, many are now recovering and walking again, said Musi Tesfe, Chief Administrative Director at Ida Hospital. These shipments will also support 20,000 patients across 19 primary health care centers for one month, including healthcare professionals and their families with food. Access to safe drinking water is a further key need for the population, and deterioration of this essential service has serious humanitarian consequences. The installation and rehabilitation of hand pumps is extremely important in rural and suburban areas, as access to water infrastructure is limited and people rely on contaminated sources. In addition, through the restoration and replacement of key mechanical components, we are working together with the local water authority to ensure minimal disruption of clean water service in the region's largest cities, explained Ivano Marathi, water and habitat coordinator for the ICRC in Addis Ababa. The health benefits are enormous, given the vast number of people served. The ICRC's support will enable the population in the areas of Mekele, Adigrat, Adua, Aksum and Shire to benefit from clean water through the treatment and maintenance of the town's water facilities. Rehabilitation of the water system will also provide clean water to 500 daily patients at Ida Hospital, and the restoration of the Shiraro Hospital building will benefit 100 patients a day. In rural areas, the installation of water pumps will serve 40,000 people. Beyond medical and water supply support, assistance brought in by the ICRC includes essential household items for up to 15,000 people as well as distribution of seeds to 20,000 farmers. Nevertheless, the ICRC's contribution remains modest set against the huge needs, and the humanitarian situation in Tigray remains worrying. The ICRC welcomes the willingness of the parties to the conflict to facilitate passage of much-needed humanitarian aid. It is vital that the assistance keeps reaching the region on a regular basis. In parallel and aligned with its countrywide approach in Ethiopia, the ICRC continues its significant assistance programs in neighboring Afar and Amhara, as well as in Aromia and Somali regions. This includes the provision of seeds and cash for agricultural inputs, as well as a larger scale livestock vaccination program for 1.6 million animals completed in Aromia, Somalia and Afar, working closely alongside the Ethiopian Red Cross Society. T-Tube, we are working in human rights and humanitarian issues, subscribe, share, watch our videos and comment us. Thank you.